This is Encrypted, a brand new 1.18.2 questing mod pack that starts us out in a completely blank void world. The only thing in this world is white simulation block and a single piece of dirt. If we open the quest book here, we can see that we start with the encrypted quest line. And there are kind of five information quests here to get us started and kind of let us know what is going on here. So the first is cryptocurrency. It says cryptocurrencies can be used to buy items from the eShop, spend it wisely. And already we start out with the, uh, <laughs> the, the cryptocurrency simulation sound effects. Read me. Uh, so we've got some important information here about the mod pack. Mobs don't spawn at nighttime, but cursed earth farms do still work, so we can get mobs to spawn using cursed earth. Encrypted matter can be obtained by crouch right-clicking the white simulation blocks. So this is kind of similar to how you'd normally get maybe stone pebbles in a sky block or a stone block. Ultimine mine is installed. Uh, for those who don't know, this is the mod that lets you uh, mine multiple of the same block all at once when you hold down the specific key. Number four, you can twerk or sprint to grow saplings and plants. And then number five, white simulation blocks can be combined with other elements to make new colored variants. There is a little bit of a backstory here. It says a tragic accident. You are a software engineer who works at Crypt Tech. After hard work, Crypt Tech succeeded in making a machine that can simulate reality. They called it SRSM. One day, while you were working on the SRSM, it developed a bug that caused it to transport you to a whole new simulated reality. Luckily, your pocket computer has the ability to write some code and inject it into this simulated reality. Encrypted is all about generating resources and making machines to help you get back to the real world. Some quests slash recipes are subject to change. And then finally, uh, there's a little section about contact. Uh, this pack is made by Cryptic, and you can join the Cryptic uh, Encrypted Discord with this link right here. Perfect. So we do get an advanced wireless pocket computer, as well as 100 XP. And there are so many noises being made in the background right now. I love the, the attention to detail with stuff like that in mod packs, and I've actually never used the advanced wireless pocket computer before from uh, computer craft tweaked but uh, i'm interested to see how that plays a role in this mod pack before we get started too much here i do want to do a few things if we go to options controls and then keybinds i would like to change my quest keybind to grave that's the key directly beneath the escape key and to the left of the number one key on your keyboard just so we can open the quest book without having to go into our inventory first. Uh, you'll see that the grave key is already bound to alter mine. I'm going to change that to a button on my mouse. And then as per usual, the button on my mouse is usually allocated to back by quark it is. So we'll get rid of that as well. That way I can press the grave key to instantly open up the quests and I can hold down the button on my mouse to get the FTB alter mine stuff to appear in the top left there. That will become more important as we press on. Now, for those of you familiar with antimatter chemistry, this pack seems to draw at least a little bit of inspiration from that mod pack, but with a, a hefty number of tweaks to make it stand out on its own as a 1.18.2 mod pack. Much like antimatter chemistry, we start in a void world and we do have uh, the alchemistry mod, which adds all of these chemicals here that you can use to combine to make different resources from Minecraft. I'm actually not sure how much this plays a role in the pack going forward, but I assume it's going to play at least a little bit of a role because we do have it here and it is uh, allocated to one of the quest lines. At the very least, this quest line does look scary, but it does specify at the top here. You don't need to complete them all. This is just here to give you an overview of all of the elements that are in the pack. So this uh, quest line here, the uh, player.get progression, is the general progression of the pack. It kind of works us through uh, all the different stages and those kind of correlate to all of the stages in the uh, new reality quest folder here. So this like folder is the main quest line. And then we have additional quest lines down here. We have utility, generation, and storage. These ones are not like main quest line quests. These just kind of give you an idea of what furnaces are in the pack, what useful items are in the pack, the kind of uh, pipes and conduits you can use to move items, fluid, and gases around, stuff like that. We also have generators and we have different types of storage. I'm sure we'll get to all of those in the future, but let's go ahead and start right here. Progression.start. We'll take that. That's going to give us some XP levels, some AR goggles from advanced peripherals, and another piece of cryptocurrency. So I believe the way that the cryptocurrency works is just like any other kind of in game currency, we can spend it at the eShop. Now, the eShop does have some pretty cool stuff here. 
Right at the top, we've got some stuff from storage drawers. These are items that you can craft, but I assume the idea here is that you can purchase these prior to having the resources to craft them. So the draw key requires gold, for example. And uh, if you wanted the draw key to be able to lock and unlock drawers before you get gold, you could purchase it here in the store. There's then cooler stuff like the angel ring, which gives you creative flight. This one, of course, significantly more expensive. It costs 150 cryptocurrency to purchase that. Uh, there's also things like speed force here. This is a trinket that you can apply to yourself and that's gonna increase your speed to 200%. And then at the bottom, we have things like the uh, sophisticated backpacks. It looks like we can buy Wither Skeleton Skulls, which actually might come in useful. Um, I do have a little bit of a track record of having tremendously bad luck at getting Wither Skeleton Skulls. And, uh, and then we have a few uh, enchantment books at the bottom here as well. So we can choose what we spend our cryptocurrency on, but the cryptocurrency is a little bit hard to get, at least in the early game. Although I am fairly certain that uh, it does say here you can make your own cryptocurrency using the PNCR assembly line. So uh, if we look at the recipe for the cryptocurrency here, we can see that uh, much, much later on in the mod pack, we can use Pneumatocraft to, uh, to turn encrypted ingots into cryptocurrency. And then at that point, we could make as much as we like and spend that on basically everything in the shop. But I do think that's going to be quite a ways away for us uh, just yet. So to start with, let's go ahead and tick from everything. That's going to give us another cryptocurrency. And I believe that's going to unlock this quest line here, which is the introduction to the mod pack. You can obtain encrypted matter by crouching and right clicking the white simulation block with empty hands. We totally can. And I really like the texture on this. I like the way that it, uh, that it moves. I think that looks super cool. So we can take this and I think we can do quite a bit with this. We can craft saplings and more saplings. It does look like we're going to use it for lava a little later on down the line, even more saplings and occasionally some logs as well. I do like that we have this choice of saplings right from the get go. That does mean that if we do any base building, we can of course uh, really pick which kind of logs we like and, uh, and use those. The Twitch chat is right with the uh, encrypted matter here. This is not uh, kept, so if you can click really fast, you can get a lot of uh, matter. And if you have a macro setup like I do, you can uh, use that to very quickly gain a large amount of encrypted matter. Uh, basically, the macro that I have just uh, right clicks very, very quickly. And so it allows us to get large amounts of encrypted matter very, very quickly, but it's really not needed. You don't need that much encrypted matter, I don't think. And uh, getting a large amount of it that fast really isn't that much of a benefit. So next quest, any sapling. I think we'll start by just crafting this into a regular old oak sapling. I think that's going to be the easiest way for us to start. And much like the quest book uh, told us before, we can go ahead and shift near the tree to cause that to grow nice and fast. And then if we hold down our ultimine key, we can go ahead and tear down the entire tree in one go. Fantastic. We do also have fast leaf decay installed, which I love to see the leaves disappear very quickly. We don't have to get rid of those manually, which is very nice indeed. So next up is logs. It wants us to get eight logs, which is for us going to be one more tree. This time slightly larger. I do also think that I'm probably going to get rid of the minimap for now, chat. We do have one in the top right, but it is currently just showing us a giant blank void. So if we press J and then go to waypoints, uh, sorry, not waypoints, we go to options and then minimap preset and then untick enable minimap. That's going to go ahead and get rid of it. We can still press J to see the map of the world around us, but it's not constantly taking up that spot in the uh, in the top right-hand corner. As a reward for completing this quest, we get even more logs and some more cryptocurrency. We do need some planks. That should be fine. I'm not quite sure how many we need. Less than 24, apparently, is the answer. And down here, more saplings. Different saplings can be crafted using the encrypted matter. It wants us to make specifically cherry wood saplings. So the cherry wood saplings are a little more expensive. They do require five encrypted matter. And so that is going to require that we craft a, a regular crafting table. I don't know if we have the crafting station. We do. It looks like we actually have Tinker's Construct installed so we can make the crafting station. The crafting station is uh, basically an upgraded version of the crafting table. The benefit to the crafting station is that uh, you can leave items in it. So if I put uh, some wood in there and then walk away, the wood doesn't spill out onto the floor. You can start putting a crafting recipe together and then come back to it when you have the right items, which uh, is just a small improvement. Uh, it also does allow you to access adjacent inventories. So if we put a chest down right next to the crafting station, we can uh, put things in here and then access them from within the crafting station itself, which is super useful. I do believe that you can also shift click in recipes. And so if we try and make an oak chest here, we can shift click in and it will pull the logs from that adjacent chest 
into the crafting station, which is going to be super useful for, uh, for early uh, crafting recipes. Thankfully, there are no mobs here, no mob spawning, even at night, so we don't really have to worry too much about it getting dark here. Now that we have a crafting table, we can, of course, craft our cherry wood sapling. And just like before, we can do a little bit of uh, shifting here to get that tree to grow. This is quite a nice tree, actually. I do quite like the uh, the pink leaves there. They've also got slightly smaller logs, and we also do have uh, a cherry wood leaf carpet on the floor there as well. This one does seem a little bit trickier to, uh, to break, so I will quickly whip up a regular old axe here. Although I do assume that we're going to start with Tinker's Construct probably sooner rather than later. This quest wants us to get demonic logs. So we can craft cherry wood logs with encrypted matter to make demonic logs. Okay, so I don't know if this cherry wood log is the right cherry wood log. It looks like a rather thin cherry wood log. Oh, but we can craft two thin cherry wood logs together to make a thick cherry wood log. And then we can craft that with our matter to get demonic logs. Let's make a few of those. How do those look? Those look like they're going to give us some nice red planks. They do. Look at that. I quite like that. I could see us making a bit of a base with some uh, some red demonic planks there inside of our simulated reality that we currently live in. Uh, back up here, though, I don't know if we necessarily need to go this way just yet. It looks like this is going to be used to make our bucket of lava. Yeah, we need some demonic leaves, which we can get as well from the demonic logs. But um, that's jumping the gun a little bit because there are a few other things that we're going to have to work through before we can get down to uh, to the cobblestone generator here. So it does look like we have a little bit of ex nihilo in the pack, although I'm fairly certain that we don't have any sieving. Yeah, there's no sieving in the pack, so it's not that kind of mod pack, but we do have crooks and we do have silkworms. So it looks like we're going to craft some sticks, craft a wooden crook, and then what you can do with the crook is if you break oak leaves with the crook, again, if you hold down your ultimate key, you can break them all at once. That's going to give you more samplings than you would normally get from breaking the leaves, but it also gives you silkworms. The silkworms here are useful because you can use those to infest the next tree that you plant, and that's going to allow you to get string. So uh, if we place this down, do a little bit of shifting, you do have to do a little bit more shifting at night. There we go. Uh, we can then go ahead and right-click these silkworms onto the tree here. That's going to infest the leaf that we right-click, but then what's going to happen is slowly but surely, that's going to infest the adjacent leaves to that leaf. And before you know it, the entire tree will be full of infested leaves, which we can then break to get string. So in theory, you do only have to put one silkworm in here, but I usually like to put a couple in there just to speed it up a little bit, especially given that the silkworms are not particularly difficult to get. And uh, you can also cook the silkworms if you have a furnace as a, a nice light snack if you're feeling a little peckish and don't really mind eating worms. Um, over here, we got a crafting blueprint. It can be used to specify ingredient arrangements for easier manual crafting. Each slot represents a recipe. I do not know how this works. Let's give this a try, shall we? So do we just, uh, let's see, if I put this in here like that and click tick, can I just now right click there to craft? I totally can. That is very nifty. Oh, so we can set up recipes that we use often and just kind of create a wall of blueprints and then we can run up just right click a bunch and that's going to craft up all the things we need that is really cool how easy are those to make is the question they are pretty easy to make we do need a painting which requires canvas and the canvas requires either straw or canvas rug i'm assuming the canvas rug yeah requires straw as well the straw we can get by cutting wild rice Oh, there is also a recipe down here that uses wool. And of course, we can. Thank you, Chant. Yes, if we use our crook on the tree here, we get string and we can use the string to make wool. Uh, real quick, I am going to get a bed here because although we don't really have to worry about uh, the fact that it's nighttime, it, uh, it is a little dark and I would prefer to be working in, uh, in the daytime, if at all possible. So it does appear that we should be able to make quite a few of those crafting blueprints fairly easily if we wanted to. And that might not be a bad idea. Uh, going forward here. Let's quickly claim some quests. One thing you can do is you can click this button in at the top right that allows you to claim all of your quest rewards at once. So right now we have uh, three quests that are yet to be claimed, but if we click this button, it will give us all of the rewards for all of those quests all at once, which is, uh, which is very nice indeed. Further down here, we have wooden shears, which if memory serves me right, are crafted like this. That's going to allow us to actually shear the leaves directly from the tree. So once again, and then this time, if we use our Ultimine key with the shears, we should 
be able to get all of the leaves all at once. And then from there, there are two things we can do. We can place the leaves into a barrel. That's going to allow us to get more dirt and therefore grow more trees. Or we can put it into a crucible, a wooden crucible specifically, which is going to allow us to get water, which is going to be required to make this cobblestone generator. So uh, I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to do both of those. If we quickly get some slabs and craft up uh, one more set of planks here, we can make a regular wooden barrel like that. If we put this down, you can place things like leaves or saplings into that barrel. I think it takes eight. It does. Uh, once you've done that, you'll see in the top left that the progress bar there is completing. And after a couple of seconds, that should transform into our second piece of dirt. It does indeed. Fantastic. For now, we can go ahead and put that down right next to this one. Uh, we are currently missing a pickaxe. That is completely fine. We should be able to make one of those. I also don't know if the, uh, the world is simulation block all the way down or if there's anything else lower in the world, like underneath the simulation block. I would assume that it is simulation block all the way down. The wooden crucible here, I think, again, is just basically oak logs. Yeah, with sticks and a slab. And this works in basically the same way here. We can place, I believe, some uh, oak leaves into here. One, two, three, and four this time. And if we press shift, you can see that uh, very slowly but surely, that is going to transform those uh, oak leaves into water. Eventually, it will get as a thousand millibuckets, which equates to one bucket of water. But at the moment, it's uh, it's only at 32. So that's going to take a little bit of time. We can leave that doing its thing for now. Uh, until then, let's claim some of our quest rewards here. Uh, we do get some vegetable soup here, which is going to be very helpful. That is a very hearty meal, which I'm very happy to have. And this wants us to get 16 dirt, which is quite a bit of dirt here. Now, it looks like we can make wooden plates out of wooden pressure plates if we do something like this and then something like this we totally can look at that this wants us to make four and i have made three that is fine i probably should start putting some of the stuff here that we have in uh in this chest especially some of this encrypted matter because we do have far too much of it clogging up our inventory as for that wooden gear that also looks like a fairly easy recipe it's four planks and one stick and then finally, there is a wooden machine frame, which is four wooden plates, one wooden gear, and then it looked like four wooden planks. It is. Nice. Now, the recipe for the cobblestone generator here requires that one wooden machine frame with six planks and then one ceramic lava bucket and one wooden water bucket. That shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Do we have four demon logs? We do not. That means that we're going to have to get some more cherry wood. I don't know if we can grow two cherry trees next to each other because they are a bit of a weird shape, unlike uh, regular old Minecraft trees. But once we have some more cherry logs, we should be able to fairly easily craft up that uh, fourth demonic log. And that in turn should allow us to craft up demonic leaves. It totally does. Fantastic. That gets us a blood cake. Which is definitely worrisome. I don't know if we should be eating that or if that's just... If that has other adverse effects. But we'll throw that down for now. Maybe we'll eat it uh, if we find ourselves in a pinch. As for the water bucket here, I believe that uh, if my Kivopolis memory is serving me right, this is the recipe for a wooden bucket. And in a few minutes, we should have a bucket worth of water that we can extract from the crucible. While we wait for that to finish, though, we can take a look up at the top here and maybe look at making our uh, first few Tinker's tools. So before we do that, there is one more quest here, one more optional quest for uh, the crafting table on a stick. This is a pretty nifty little item. And again, if memory serves me right, I think the recipe looks like that. Apparently, I am mistaken. The recipe is instead much easier. It's just that. Perfect. So this does exactly what you would expect it to do while you're out and about. Instead of having to find your way back to a regular crafting table, you can just right click the crafting table on a stick and it gives you a three by three crafting table that you can use anywhere in the world. You can now craft anywhere, anytime. We also get a stone cutter on a stick. That's pretty nifty, actually. I didn't know that was uh, a thing that existed. And we also get some more cryptocurrency, taking us to a grand total of 24. That's quite a bit. I don't know if we really have anything 
that we want to buy just yet. I feel like a lot of the good stuff is is pretty expensive. We are pretty close. We could buy a backpack if we wanted to. And these backpacks are very good. Uh, the sophisticated backpacks. You can get uh, quite a few upgrades for these backpacks that allow it to do quite a lot of stuff. Uh, my favorite is the uh, the feeding upgrade. So you can just put food into the backpack and it will automatically feed you that food over time, which is, uh, is super nifty. Um, although the backpack's not that difficult to craft, I don't know how hard it's going to be for us to get things like leather, but it does seem like the backpack is craftable fairly soon, so I might continue to save the uh, the cryptocurrency here until we can get something super useful. I really do like speed. I do like creative flight. Those might be quite far away, but I would like to, uh, to get those as soon as possible, if we could. So uh, back over here, the uh, blank pattern is something we've already made, uh, but we can make more. It is uh, quite simply two blanks and two sticks, like so. From there, we can make the tinker station, the part builder, and the crafting station. The crafting station we have, and so I think if we pick this up, that should complete that quest. It totally does. So the part builder is super easy to make, two blanks and two blank patterns. We then have the Tinker Station, which is also super easy to make. It's yet more planks and yet more blank patterns. Let's go ahead and drop those down here and here. And so now we should be able to make our first Tinker's Tools. Although bizarrely, as a reward for completing this, we were given a Copper Hoe, a Copper Pickaxe, and a Copper X. So I don't really know if there's much point in making a Tinker's Tool just yet, at least not until we burn through these. Because right now, all we can make is wooden tools, and the wooden tools are definitely not going to be as good as the copper tools that we've been given for completing the quest. We are very close on the Crucible. We're almost 800 millibuckets, so maybe 80% uh, of the way there. While we wait for that final 20% to come in, let's go ahead and make a few more barrels here. I think I'll make four more for a total of five, and we can do something like this, because the quest to get 16 dirt is going to require quite a lot of leaves, and it's also going to take quite a bit of time with just the one crucible. Again, I do think here that there's no limit to how fast you can put things into these barrels, and so uh, if you do it quickly, if you can right-click quickly, that is, it, uh, it should go in quite fast. And not too long later, we have 16 dirt. Fantastic. And our oak crucible is done. We've got one whole bucket of water, so we can go ahead and take that out. Now, what we should do here is we should go ahead and start making a second water bucket worth. What I think I'm going to do, actually, is I think I'm going to make a second crucible, because it does take a little while here. But uh, what we should do is we should make an infinite water source so that we don't have to uh, keep using this method for getting water in the future. So I'll get another crucible going. I am going to use this bucket of water here to make the cobblestone generator, but hopefully these two are going to finish at about the same time. And once these two are done, we can use these two buckets here to make an infinite water source. And then from there, we shouldn't have to use these oak crucibles uh, really ever again to get water going forward. So uh, thankfully, this quest does give us a ceramic bucket. And then now all we need to do is uh, craft up this cobblestone generator, which requires a ceramic bucket of lava, which we can make. Actually, we didn't even need the ceramic bucket because we, uh, we can make a ceramic bucket of lava using a wooden bucket, which is uh, surprising, to say the least. But either way, do we have what it takes? We do not. We're missing four demon logs. That should not be a problem for us. Let's do one, two, three, four. From there, we can craft up the ceramic lava bucket. And from there, we should have everything we need to craft our first cobblestone generator. Nice. So now, what we can do with this is we can place this down alongside a, a storage device. So I think if we put down the cobblestone generator and we put a chest above it, it should start receiving cobblestone. At a rate, we type in cobblegen of I think one cobblestone per second. It doesn't tell us the rate here, but I think it's about one cobblestone per second. It's not particularly fast, but it is free. Now we do have, if we look under the storage section here, storage drawers in the pack. And so hopefully if the recipe hasn't been changed, what we should be able to do is craft up a regular old Minecraft chest and then craft that with six planks to get a regular storage drawer. And from there, if we place that storage drawer above the cobble gen, like so, 
the cobble gen is going to start storing all of the cobblestone in the storage drawer. And uh, just for those who don't know, the storage drawer here is a single block storage device that uh, can hold one item, but it can hold a large amount of that one item. By default, this can hold 2,048 of any item. So right now it can hold 2,048 cobblestone. If you uh, shift right click, you can see that it has upgrade slots. You can upgrade it to hold, uh, I think up to over a million of any one item. And there are also different types of storage drawer that can hold more than one of a given item. So for example, this one here, the two by two drawer can hold the same amount total. It can still only hold 2,048 items in total, but instead of holding 2,048 of one item, it can hold 512 of four different items, if that makes sense. Now the Twitch chat is telling me that we should be able to upgrade the cobblestone generator basically straight away to the cobble gen tier two. And that does appear to be correct because all you need for the next tier of cobblestone generator is the first tier and eight cobblestone, boom and boom. So this is going to make cobblestone faster, 27, 28, 29, 30, so maybe two per second now, it might be twice as fast as the old one. There are five tiers of cobblestone generator. The next one requires iron and then gold and then diamond, but I think the diamond one here produces like 20 cobblestone per second. It is very fast and can produce a staggering amount of, uh, of cobblestone for us. For now though, that appears to be everything in the uh, From Everything questline complete. So next up is I Heart Chemistry. So uh, just for ticking this quest, we do get a Helium, Neon, Argon, Radon, Xenon, and Krypton, which I believe are all the, uh, the noble gases there, the noblest of gases. Uh, these are all different lamps. I don't know if we need these for anything or if these are all just purely aesthetic. We'll store those away for now. Maybe we'll uh, we'll use those in the future if they are, like maybe we'll put them down decoratively if they're not used for anything uh, in the near future. We do have this custom recipe here that lets you uh, craft four chests from eight logs, which is super nifty. Allows you to craft a lot of chests very quickly. Um, unfortunately, I put those down incorrectly. I have to not shift when I put it down. There we go. And then we'll do something like this because again we have to not shift when we put these down so we'll go boom and boom just so that we put those down and they connect fantastic so uh, let's have a look what is the next quest here the next quest i think might be up here it totally is so we'll take this who hates chemistry i heart chemistry all right so the first quest is to make a cobblestone generator and i do quite like that the game is giving us quite a bit of uh, of stuff right out the gate here again let's do a little bit of an inventory claim i'm gonna put everything in here for now and I'm gonna keep the stuff that I need, which is a pickaxe and an X, and then maybe my crafting table on a stick. We can always pull more out when we need it. And you know what, just for good measure, boom. We'll put our uh, fire hazard warning sign up as well. No fire there right now, but you know, there might be some in the future. In fact, actually, can I put that uh, on here? There is a little bit of lava there that could be uh, considered a fire hazard. Either way, let's have a look. Can we craft ourselves a regular old Minecraft furnace? We cannot. That leads me to believe that the recipe has been tweaked. It has. We require seven cobblestone and then one compressed cobblestone. Thankfully, we do have a large amount of cobblestone. And so making that happen is nice and easy. We'll go ahead and throw that down. Uh, let's say here for now. As a reward, we do get four compressed cobblestone, a guidebook to uh, alchemistry, the periodic table of elements, and yet another uh, cryptocurrency. Um, I do quite like having this available to us. Gives us a nice easy glimpse at, at all of the elements there. And uh, it also does show us the uh, atomic makeup of those elements as well, which is uh, is interesting at the top there with the uh, the circle. It shows you the uh, the electron positioning. I'm not quite sure if that's going to be particularly useful for us, but anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and progress on here. We do have the tier two cobble gen. All we need to do is pick that up and the quest will complete. Fantastic. And now this is where we get into a little bit of the chemistry side of things. So... For those of you familiar with alchemistry from Minecraft 1.12, the dissolver and combiner are usually the two main machines. The uh, dissolver usually lets you break down items into their chemical form, and then the combiner usually lets you uh, recombine elements into new resources. Uh, for example, if we look at coal here, we can turn two graphite into one coal, and we can make graphite in the combiner with four carbon. Carbon we can get by breaking down, presumably, some form of living material. Yes, we can uh, break down uh, cellulose into carbon and we can get cellulose from logs. So basically, we can turn our logs into carbon 
and then we can turn our carbon back into coal. So this is basically a way of transmuting certain items into other items via the medium of chemistry. Now these do require power, so I'm interested to know how we're going to power these, but uh, maybe we'll find that out. I am also going to start smelting a couple of logs here just to give us some uh, charcoal to make torches with, because it is a uh, it is getting dark, and I would prefer it to not stay super dark. Thankfully, the cobblestone generator does provide a little bit of light. But uh, let's have a look here. Can we make the dissolver? I think we can. Yeah, it requires uh, six smooth stone, one furnace, one compressed cobblestone, and one wooden hopper. The Twitch chat has recommended that I make quite a few wooden hoppers here, so I am going to do that just so that we have a couple lying around ready to go, and we don't have to keep crafting the same recipe over and over and over again. These are made in the exact same way as regular hoppers, by the way, uh, but instead of using iron, you just use regular wood for the entire recipe, like so. Over here, we have a few charcoal, so we'll go and make at least a couple of torches here to light up the, uh, the area around us. All right, so I've scattered a few torches down for now, uh, just to kind of tide us over until we eventually get to, uh, to sleeping. But uh, let's go ahead and start smelting up some cobblestone here. I do think it's almost certainly going to be in our best interest to make a few more furnaces. Uh, if we uh, craft down our quadruple compressed cobblestone, that gets us nine triple compressed cobblestone that we can then craft down into a stack and 17 double compressed. We can then craft that down into a staggering amount of regular cobblestone. And then you, you can see here that we have just a crazy amount of cobblestone available to us thanks to that quest at the beginning. And that should allow us to make really as many furnaces as we like. Let's do something like this. And we're probably going to need to get more wood very shortly because we've managed to burn through our entire supply of wood very quickly. Um, I am going to put a lot of the cobblestone away. I don't think we're quite at the point where we can make a compacting drawer just yet. We're not. We need both redstone and iron before we can make a compacting drawer. So um, right now we can't really do too much with the compressed cobble outside of put it into its own drawer. We could craft it down to regular cobble, but I'm going to keep it as compressed cobble just in case there are more crafting recipes that do require the uh, the compressed cobble. Again, it's just going to save us having to, uh, to recraft stuff over and over and over again. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I guess, is uh, quickly see about smelting up six, or I guess 12. Yeah, 12 smooth stone. And then from there, we should be able to make both the combiner and the dissolver. We did just get a, uh, a comfort buff for eating our... Uh, our vegetable soup. I'm not quite sure what comfort does, but I'll take it. Uh, over here, we do have 16 of the smooth stone. And uh, if we grab some more cobblestone of both varieties, we should be able to craft up, uh, at the very least, two more furnaces. And that should be everything for us to get the dissolver and the combiner. It is. Nice. So, both of these do require power. At least the combiner does. Maybe the dissolver doesn't. It doesn't say it does, but I think it might. Now, we do have a quest line down at the bottom. Let me quickly claim my uh, cryptocurrency here. We do have a quest line right down at the bottom for generators. And the first quest here says uh, these generators burn any flammable items to generate RF. Uh, burn time is the same in all generators, only the output of the generators is different. So, there are a ton of generators here that all basically do the same thing, but they just produce more power from burning things like wood, coal, sticks, charcoal, slabs, etc. And I think the first and easiest one for us to make is going to be the stone generator here. It does only produce one redstone flux per tick, which is not particularly great, but we don't currently have any of the stuff required to make these other guys here. So I think we're going to have to start with this, which is eight smooth stone and another regular furnace. The regular furnace, again, should not be too difficult for us. And then from there, we do have the smooth stone required to craft ourselves a very basic and very bad stone generator. So let's put the combiner on one side and the dissolver on the other. And then let's see about putting a little bit of fuel into those machines. I think it might be worth making some charcoal here, potentially. Although actually, it's probably not. We can get wood very easily. I think it's probably just best that we throw planks in there and let those burn into uh, into power. So in order to progress on to the next quest line, uh, we do need to make a compactor, which I don't think is a device I've used for uh, used before, but does appear to be fairly easy for us to, uh, to make. Let's quickly get some more smooth stone smelting here. And then other than the smooth stone, we need two 
2x compressed cobble and another wooden machine frame, which really shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, we do have more planks available to us. So uh, let's just go ahead and craft up yet more wooden plates. Boom, there's our wooden gear. And boom, there is our wooden machine frame. Can we sleep to get rid of the rain? We cannot. Uh, let's go options, uh, music and sound, and then let's turn weather right down there so it's not quite as loud as it was before. And that should be everything for the combiner. The only downside, uh, not the combiner, sorry, the compactor. The only downside to having a chest next to your crafting station is that it blocks your bookmarks. Uh, again, for those who don't know, you can uh, bookmark items in JEI. So if you find a recipe that you want to save for later, like the compactor, you can hover over it, press A, and then it will save it over here. So that now, even if you get rid of the search for compactor, it's still there on the left-hand side. Uh, and again, you can press A just to get rid of the recipes once you've made them. But uh, that's quite useful normally because it means that, uh, for example, if we get our crafting table on a stick, I can just click here and see the recipe. So uh, it's a little awkward sometimes having a chest next to the crafting station like that. But uh, either way, for now, if we make two double compressed cobblestone, that should be everything for the combiner. It is. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that that should be everything that we need. This one does require power uh, that we need to get into the next quest line. So uh, let's click here. Visiting other dimensions. Interesting. So we need to make 10 obsidian. And I assume, based on the fact that we've just been kind of walked through our chemistry, I assume we have to do it using our chemistry. So I think we're going to need 80 potassium chloride, 80 magnesium oxide, 80 aluminum oxide, and 240 silicon dioxide. That might sound like a lot, but I'm pretty sure you get silicon dioxide from cobblestone. Yeah. So... And also, it looks like the dissolver might not require any power. Like, its bar is not filling up there. But it's also not working. Okay, so maybe it does need power. Let's try. This one's filling up first. We might just need so many more stone <laughs> generators to get enough power for this. Okay, let's see about making, at the very least, two more stone generators then. And for now, what we'll do is we'll just move these and we'll have one generator next to each machine so that we know exactly where all of our uh, all of our power is going. So I'll put one dissolver there and I'll put the combiner there like that. So now we can put fuel into all of these. And although it's still going to be slow because we're only producing one fifteenth of the power required, we should be able to put some cobblestone in here and start breaking that down. Now, if we press U here, we can see that uh, there's a 96.82% chance that uh, we get nothing from cobblestone, and then there's a small percentage chance that we get silicon dioxide, iron, aluminum, gold, zincronium, zychronium, sorry, uh, gallium, dysprosium, tungsten, and nickel. Okay. Uh, we can also take our white simulation blocks here and break these down. These give you a much higher rate of silicon dioxide as well as a little bit of tungsten. So maybe we should throw those in. Yeah, that's going to get us some silicon dioxide. Now, the question becomes, I guess, where do we get everything else from? Potassium chloride, we can get from granite, diorite, andesite, and then all the polished versions of that. I don't know, though, if there's a way for us to get granite early on. Oh, I guess there totally is, right? Yeah, so we can take our... It's an interesting situation. I'm not quite sure of the lo like logic of how that works. But we can take our cobblestone or our simulation block. We can run that through the dissolver to get silicon dioxide. And then over in the combiner, we can put in our silicon dioxide and we can turn that into granite. Oh, my bad. It goes in the uh, the compactor, like this. Now, I don't know necessarily how we specify that we want granite, because the recipe for stone and diorite is the same. Can I shift-click the recipe in? Oh, I totally can. All right, nice. Okay, cool. There we go. So we can use our... Simulation block or cobblestone to get silicon dioxide. We can then use the silicon dioxide to make granite, but then we can break down the granite to potentially get potassium chloride. It's not a particularly high chance, but there is a chance there of getting potassium chloride. Interesting. Okay, let me uh, claim my cryptocurrency reward there. That is interesting. You can also, of course, combine uh, chlorine and potassium in the combiner to make potassium chloride. And it's quite possible that there might be a better way of getting potassium and chlorine. You can get potassium from potatoes, and you can get chlorine from something. 
There is a layer of gray simulation block underneath the white layer. Simulation blocks can be dissolved into different elements and components. So what do we get from light gray simulation block is my next question. A light gray simulation block gets us silicon dioxide, iron, carbon, and tungsten. Interesting. So the cool thing is here, what we can do is uh, we can break this down and we can actually use the iron to make iron ingots. So we can take uh, the iron and if we put it in the compactor, we can turn 16 iron element into one iron dust. And then of course we can smelt that one iron dust into actual iron. So we do have a way straight out of the gate here of getting iron. I do think that one of the first things that we should probably look towards doing is upgrading our power generation because at the current rate, it's going to take us a little while just to get the like just to do anything here because it requires uh, so much power and we're only producing one fifteenth of the power required. So it might be worth trying to get some iron here. Uh, do we have the ability to ultimine this? We totally do. And one thing you can do if you hold down your ultimine key, you'll see in the top left it currently says shapeless. If you hold shift and then scroll, you can change the shape of the area that the ultimine mines out. Uh, so if we click mining tunnel. We can then go ahead and do something like this, which almost worked. And this, and this. Oh, it zigzags. Okay, so it, it goes from white to gray and then back to white again. But uh, basically, you can kind of see there from the outline that this digs a little bit of a, uh, a zigzag tunnel. Oh, I didn't realize we're so close to bedrock. Wow, okay, so we started like Y level 8. I really thought that we were, uh, we were much lower down. Oh, people do also mention, of course, uh, let's uh, sleep because there's a thunderstorm. But people have pointed out, we do have a um, compressed cobblestone. And compressed cobblestone is quite possibly one of the easiest ways for us to get a large amount of resources. So if we take this and we uh, we recompress it back into triple or double compressed, and then we take that and compress it into uh, triple compressed. If we put a triple compressed in here, let's take these out first. We actually get quite a bit of stuff. We got a lot of silicon dioxide, some aluminum, some iron, and some gold. Let's put all of that in there. And that's going to get us quite a bit of stuff. Specifically iron and gold, which are going to be particularly useful for, uh, for getting those higher tier generators. Chant does make a good point that quite possibly the best course of action here is to focus initially on upgrading the cobblestone generator. Because it looks like we've got 2,000 cobblestone, but it looks like cobblestone is going to be our main source of stuff at least in the early game here how hard is redstone to make if we can get some redstone then we should be able to make a compacting draw very easily we need strontium carbonate and iron oxide so iron oxide is iron and oxygen strontium carbonate is strontium and carbonate carbonate is carbon and oxygen so carbon we can get oxygen i think we can also get because i think we might get oxygen from cellulose so if i was to take something like uh, wood and I was to drop that into the dissolver that gets us cellulose you'll see cellulose is C6 that's carbon 6 H10 hydrogen 10 and O5 oxygen 5 so we can break that down we get 6 carbon 5 oxygen and 10 hydrogen uh, that's C6 H10 O5 beautiful so the iron oxide shouldn't be too difficult the strontium carbonate though could prove itself more tricky okay so it turns out that the red simulation block, each simulation block gives you different uh, resources, which is useful. The red simulation block here can be broken down into strontium, iron oxide, and silicon dioxide. The, the way you make red simulation block is by crafting normal simulation block with iron oxide, and as we saw before, we can make iron oxide. So we can get strontium, and so I think it actually might be worth seeing if we can't get a compacting draw here. The benefit of the compacting draw is that it's going to allow us to automatically basically craft our cobblestone into compressed and then double compressed cobblestone. So we don't have to do a lot of manual crafting there for getting large amounts of cobblestone. So let's see then if we can't get some iron oxide. So it used to be that you would do basically everything in the dissolver and combiner. It looks like in the new version of Alchemistry, the combiner is used for combining chemicals. The compactor is used for turning chemicals into actual stuff. At least that's how it appears to be so far. So here we're looking to make iron oxide this stuff right here. So we need some iron and we need some oxygen. Nice. <laughs> it's not much iron oxide, but it's some. And then from there, we can craft our iron oxide with our white simulation block to get red simulation block. And then from there, we can break that down. Now we only need two redstone. 
We didn't get any strontium though. If we're going to make two redstone, we need two strontium carbonate and two iron oxide. So two strontium carbonate requires two strontium. That's basically what we're after right now. So let's do what we just did a few more times with a few more logs here and see if we can't get enough strontium. Also, we do have to change our mining mode back to shapeless here uh, to see if we can't get two redstone. Chat is pointing out that uh, we can actually use beetroots here to accelerate our production of iron oxide because if we break down a beetroot we do get sucrose and iron oxide and of course we can just grow beetroots on dirt and we can make beetroots using iron oxide and sucrose sucrose we get from hydrogen uh carbon and oxygen which we do have so over here if we go sucrose like that we can put in our carbon our hydrogen and our oxygen we got this from cellulose by the way and uh, that gets us sucrose I was mistakenly under the impression that you could craft beetroots into beetroot seeds. That is not the case. And chat has reminded me we do have to make uh, beetroot seeds first. These are a little bit more tricky. They require sucrose, iron oxide, and triglyceride. But the triglyceride, it really isn't too difficult. Uh, if we type it in here, triglyceride. Again, it is just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Fantastic. So we'll take all three of those and see if we can't get some beetroot seeds. So uh, this is done in the combiner, which is not the compactor. Interesting. These are made in the combiner. Okay, so some things are made in here, I guess. The beetroot seed requires one triglyceride, one sucrose, and then one iron oxide. Nice. So now we can take that, and uh, if we were to go ahead and quickly grab ourselves a regular old Minecraft hoe, we can uh, hoe the ground here, plant down our beetroot, like so, and then presumably if we shift next to it, that's going to accelerate the growth of the beetroot, and oh, you get more beetroot seeds from the from growing it, which is fantastic. You actually get a lot of beetroot seeds from growing it. Of course, that means that we can go ahead and do something like this and plant down even more beetroots. And then we can do this and we can harvest these. And then we can take all of these beetroots and run them through our chemical dissolver, which is going to give us even more sucrose, which is hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, as well as more iron oxide. That iron oxide is then going to make it easier for us to get the red simulation blocks, which we can then use to get some more redstone. Now, uh, we should, real quick here, see if we have a bucket left over. We do, but we can use the ceramic one. We should, before I forget, take our water and create an unlimited water source. I'm going to put that down right about here. So now we shouldn't have to worry about using these in the future to get more water. And we should be able to get quite a bit of iron oxide very quickly here. So once again, let's see about doing something like this to get ourselves some red simulation block. Uh, we did just mine some more white simulation block from down here. I think I am going to try and do a lot of my white simulation block mining on the bottom level of the world here, just so that we don't make a complete mess of, uh, of the surface. And then over here, let's see if we can't get a decent amount of strontium. And then did I figure out how much we needed here? Each piece of redstone just requires, uh, I think, just the one piece. Yeah, so you need one strontium per redstone, and we've got 12, so we should be able to make a fair bit of redstone here. Let's see if we can make that happen. So redstone is made in the combiner. Again, not made in the compactor. That is fine. Let's type in redstone, and then we'll put in the iron oxide along with the strontium carbonate. We need to make that first, of course. So strontium carbonate first requires carbonate. Uh, the carbonate requires carbon and oxygen, both of which we should have. So carbon... And oxygen will make a fair amount of this because I would like a, a fair amount of redstone if we can get it. Although power is of the concern, so I won't make too much of it actually. And then we'll do... Can I just put these in? Will it, like if I do the recipe, will it do it for me? Or will I, do I have to... No, it looks like I do have to actually type in uh, strontium carbonate first. Boom and boom. Again, we'll not make too much just yet. And then from there, that should be everything for the redstone, right? Strontium carbonate and iron oxide. Boom and boom. And there we go, we have some redstone. Perfect. So, we do need to get some iron here. Thankfully, we do have quite a bit of it. And of course, the uh, the beets here are basically an infinite source of iron because we can take the beetroots, place them in the dissolver, and then take the iron oxide and re-dissolve that to get iron and oxygen. So we can basically use our beetroot farm here for infinite iron because we can take the iron and craft that inside the compactor. This one is done here. So we'll press U and then shift click in the recipe and then we can throw all of that in. That gets us iron dust. We can put the iron dust into our furnaces here. That is, of course, going to get us some iron ingots. I'm going to make a few more here. We do need quite a few of these. And then once we have enough iron ingots, we should be able to make a compacting drawer. So the compacting drawer requires a regular storage drawer with two pistons, five stone, 
and an iron ingot. So stone we do have. Pistons we can make now that we have the iron and the redstone. We just need a few more logs, which we are probably going to have to grow and harvest because right now we are completely out of logs. One and two. There's two pistons. So now we're just missing a regular drawer and an iron ingot. The iron ingot we have. And so if we craft up another regular old Minecraft chest and another regular old oak storage drawer, that should be everything for the compacting drawer. And now if we place the compacting drawer above the cobblestone generator, it should start to auto compact our cobblestone into both compressed and I was hoping double compressed, but at the very least it does. Oh no, yeah, it does. Okay, so it offers it as here in regular cobblestone, compressed cobblestone and double compressed cobblestone. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't show the graphic for regular cobblestone, but if you click here, you get regular cobblestone. If you click here, you get compressed cobblestone once we have enough. And if you click here, you get double compressed cobblestone, which is very useful. So we can put all of our compressed cobblestone in there. That is perfect. And we can also, if we want, start moving some of our other cobblestone into here as well. The compacting drawer by default can hold significantly more than a regular drawer. You'll see here it can hold up to 128 stacks of any given item and 128 multiplied by 64 is 8192 so just by default this can hold about four times as much as the regular draw can plus we get the added benefit of it auto compressing that down for us so now uh, you'll see in the top there that we have 34 uh, double compressed cobblestone so if we wanted to we could just go ahead and take 34 double compressed cobblestone out and we could run that through our dissolver to get a bunch more resources now before we do that there are a few other things that I think we should do here. I think we should look at increasing the tier of our cobblestone generator. That's going to allow us to generate cobblestone faster. And because we can turn cobblestone into resources, it of course generates us resources faster. Now to upgrade it, we do need nine iron. And so we are going to have to get, I think, a little bit more in the way of beetroot. Um, I do believe we can break down the beetroot seeds as well because we're getting a staggering amount of these. Unfortunately, that only gets you cellulose. It doesn't actually get you iron oxide. And so that does mean that for now, the beetroot seeds are a little bit worthless. They're not really anywhere near as useful to us as the actual beetroots are. But that's fine. We could take our uh, extra beetroots and throw those in. And there we go. A little bit of beet growing and iron smelting later. We do have uh, eight iron ingots. So uh, let's go ahead and pick up this guy. Um, I did break the copper pickaxe that we had by uh, vein mining or ultra mining, I should say for uh, the simulation blocks earlier. So we are going to have to look at getting a, uh, a new pickaxe fairly soon. But now though, boom, that gets us a higher tier cobblestone generator. If we wanted to upgrade this even further, we would just need eight gold, which we're so close to. Oh no, we're not that close to actually, Never mind. Um, for some reason I thought we would, uh, it was eight gold uh, element per gold. It's not quite that. But if we take some double compressed cobblestone, uh, we might be able to get a little bit more gold. Although it doesn't look like we're going to get anywhere near enough to get us uh, up to eight dust. We've got five dust, though. That's a shame. We're so close. We've got five out of the eight that we need. But for now, we can put this back down. And uh, we should now see that we are getting cobblestone faster than before. You'll see that the uh, cobblestone plus seven, eight, uh, and then nine. When it gets to nine, it ticks up to a, a compacting drawer. It's a little hard to see here, but uh, I'm not quite sure. I feel like this is a little bit bugged. But uh, we do have cobblestone in here. It is being generated, and then it is being crafted up uh, for us to use uh, for more resources going forward. We are getting rewards as we go here, which is pretty nice. We are getting more cryptocurrency, uh, as well as a little bit of beetroot soup, which I will go ahead and slurp down here. That also gives us the uh, comfort buff. Again, still not quite sure what that's for, but uh, we are at 40 cryptocurrency now. So we are getting quite close to being able to buy something like speed. I say quite close. We're a third of the way there to be able to buy something like speed, which is not really what I would consider quite close, but we're getting there. Now, another thing that the Twitch chat is recommending that we uh, we make is the bonsai pot here. This is made from five brick, and brick we can get by smelting clay. Clay we can get from kaolinite. Kaolinite? Kaolinite. This might be something that we can make now. Silicon dioxide we have, water we can make, that's H2O, and then aluminum oxide is just aluminum and oxygen, and the aluminum we can get I believe, from one of the simulation blocks. We are getting some from the cobblestone. Um, let me check, though. Is there a simulation block that gets us aluminum? There is the black simulation block, which you get from carbon. That seems fairly easy for us to do. So if we do this with carbon, that gets us black simulation block. If we run that through here, that gets us some aluminum. Can we make 
water, silicon dioxide, and aluminum oxide. So water we don't have, but silicon dioxide we've got a ton of. Water we can make with hydrogen and oxygen. I do wish that these were not the same color. That's a little tricky to, uh, to make out. Like if one of these were blue, that would be uh, easier. But let's do this and this. Again, I think nine is probably enough for now. And then aluminum oxide is also very easy for us to do. It is aluminum with, you guessed it, oxygen. And then from there, that should be basically everything we need, right? So if we're gonna make the kaolinite, we just need two silicon dioxide, one aluminum oxide and water. So uh, let's type in KAO, click on that. We'll put in the aluminum oxide, silicon dioxide and water. That's gonna make us the kaolinite. And then I think we need one more. It looks like we might need more water. There we go. And once we have the kaolinite, we should then be able to head on over to our compactor and begin turning that into clay. Nice. Once we have five clay, we can smell that up into five brick. And once we have five brick, we should be able to get the bonsai pot from the bonsai trees three mod. And from there, what that's going to allow us to do is automate the growing of things like wood here to basically give us an infinite supply of wood going forward, which is going to be particularly useful for fuel. Right now, we're using wood as our sole method of generating power. And if we can automate the production of that power, that's going to make our lives so much easier. It's going to mean that we have to spend less time going forward at twerking to grow trees and less time harvesting the wood from those trees. So the bonsai pot, uh, what we can do here, I think, is we can go ahead and craft up a two by two storage drawer. This one here that I mentioned earlier. If we put that down, these are crafted in sets of four, by the way. Uh, if we put that down, let's say here, and we place the bonsai pot on top of it, what we can do is we can place a single piece of dirt into that bonsai pot by right clicking like so. We can then place in a sapling. Also, real quick, I'm going to turn auto jump off, uh, but we can also place a sapling into there by right clicking like that. And then you'll see that that is going to slowly but surely grow a tree for us. Now, what we can then do is we can then place an X into the bonsai pot. So if we grab uh, three cobblestone, we can do something like this and we can place the X here into the bonsai pot. That's going to automatically cut down the trees as they're grown and deposit the outputs into the output slot. Now from there, you can also, I believe, put a hopper into here to allow it to automatically uh, drop the items into the drawer below. However, if I type in uh, bonsai here, I think it has to be a regular hopper. Yeah, so if you put a regular hopper in, that's gonna work. We do have a wooden hopper, that's not gonna work. We could, if we wanted to, move the bonsai pot up by one and use the wooden hopper to pull the items down, but we do have quite a bit of iron lying around, and so we should probably just go ahead and craft up a few more iron dust and use that to actually get a real hopper that we can use to turn that into an auto hopper. And at that point, we will have basically fully automated the process of generating uh, oak logs along with saplings and potentially also apples. Let me check. Yeah, so logs, you have a 75% chance of getting. Apples, you have a 5% chance of getting. Sticks, 20%. Uh, and oak saplings, 5%. You can also get leaves as well, but if you want to get leaves, you have to enchant this stone X here with Sock Touch. For now, we're not going to do that uh, because it's not really worth it to us. Instead, we're going to take a regular chest, craft that up into a regular hopper, and then put that into the upgrade slot right there. That's going to drop those items down into here. This is perfect because this has four slots, one for saplings, one for apples, one for logs, and one for sticks. And so this should continue to just passively generate all of these resources for us. Of course, if we wanted to, we can uh, place down even more of these and we can start using all of that uh, wood as fuel for our stone generator and also just for regular oil crafting going forward as well. Chat is right. We actually don't get apples there. You'll see it does say requires a beehive upgrade. So uh, we would have to put a beehive into the, uh, the botany pot or the bonsai pot uh, like this if we wanted to get uh, the fruit that is apples. But uh, that's fine. That shouldn't be too big of a problem for us just yet. I think, chat, that that is probably going to do it for this episode of Encrypted. I think what I might do between streams, I might make a few more storage drawers, and I might look at dedicating a storage drawer to each element. Right now, we do have quite a few elements, and things are starting to clog up our uh, storage situation quite a bit. Uh, I might also make a storage drawer for like the encrypted matter and uh, and you know wood planks or something like that, just so we can kind of more easily organize some of the items we already have. Next time, we'll come back. We'll see if we can't get 
the obsidian made here. I'll take a look between streams and, uh, and see if I can't find out what it is we need to get in order to make the magnesium oxide, the potassium chloride, the aluminum oxide, and the silicon dioxide. Once we have enough of all of these, we can make our obsidian, we can head through to the nether, and people have pointed out that once we have netherrack, we can use that netherrack to get gold more easily, because the netherrack here breaks down and has a chance of getting gold, and then I think you might even be able to break down uh, nether brick as well into uh, maybe even more gold. Yeah, you get a slightly higher chance of getting gold if you turn the netherrack into nether bricks first. So that is going to be a source of gold for us, which is then going to allow us to upgrade our cobblestone generator. Uh, we can also uh, then upgrade it even further with diamonds. Diamonds you can make with carbon. So it needs uh, two stacks of graphite is required to make uh, one diamond. And each graphite does require four carbon. So uh, we would need eight stacks of carbon if we wanted to get one diamond. But we do in technically have the ability to make diamonds from the wood that we have here because we could turn the wood into cellulose and the cellulose into uh, into carbon and then that carbon into diamonds so the diamonds are possible that's going to allow us to make a diamond pickaxe uh, and then it looks like we're going to get a mining portal and visit the mining dimension which is interesting so this is cool it says ooh oz baby so this is kind of where it might verge away from antimatter chemistry antimatter chemistry had a big focus on using uh the chemistry mods throughout the entirety of the pack. I'm wondering if this is going to kind of veer off a little bit and not be quite as chemistry focused once we get to the mining dimension. Maybe once we get here, we can use this dimension for getting ores um, and you know things like iron, redstone, gold, diamonds, etc. in the future. And then we can move forward through uh, blood magic and some other magic mods into mods like create, into some of the tech mods like mechanism and thermal expansion, down into some space mods. We do have galactic craft in here. Part of our goal is going to be to go to uh, at least the moon, potentially even a few other planets as well. And then the final quest uh, line looks something like this. We do have singularities. Uh, they don't seem too, too bad. They all require uh, elements by the looks of it here. But uh, again, 10,000 oxygen in the late game, hopefully shouldn't be too, too difficult. And our final goal, of course, is to craft the finished program here. This is quite the, uh, the recipe, but I'm sure we'll get there in due time. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.